hostiles. 12 o'clock is six miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. In today's video, I would like to share some things with you that I found using Google Earth Pro here off the Gulf Coast of Florida. Now, this region has long been studied and some very strange things have come up using Google Earth Pro using the time slider and changing the perspective looking at things from a different angle some things get revealed that I haven't seen covered before and I'd like to share that with you now one of the more unsung regions of Florida but one of the most exclusive is this place called Marco Island and it's right here. It's just about as far south as you can go on the Gulf side of Florida. It is extremely exclusive. It is one giant high-rise, high-end hotel after another. Probably the most expensive area, for sure, of Florida is down here. But once you get past it and you start to go around the Cape here, it's impenetrable, impassable. It's the glades. Um, believe me, if there were any ability for any large commercial organization to put hotels here or do anything with it, they would have already. Now, the reason I say that is once you get down to the very tip of Florida, you see something strange when you look at it from this angle. There's this bay that we talked about, and it's where those red squares were found. But when you look at it from higher above, it almost seems as if there could have been at one time when the sea levels were lower a city here and if the sea levels were markedly lower where the keys were not just a bunch of dots of islands and one solid strip like this this would have been in ancient times a crucial port a very strategic port and would have more than likely attracted population now the reason that i I'm talking about it specifically it has to do over here in the keys there's some structures that just when you look at it under high res don't make a whole lot of sense to just natural formations 
as you can see, the way these things kind of have channels and then keys, a channel and then keys, is there's strips to them. And this is the direction they go. But when you look out here at the end, you start to see perfectly straight structures that run perpendicular to it. And when you look very closely at them, you see things that look like constructs. In fact, I'm going to show you one that looks like it could have been, at one time, if the sea levels were lower, an airport. There's one wall here. There's another wall here. But as you keep going, look at this right here. This looks like it could be, now it's underwater here, of course, any airport in Florida where they just have two runways cross. And it's not just these. As you continue to move through this region, you see things that make you think that this at one time could have been occupied. This could have been an area that thousands of years ago had roads and had cities and had ports. And, you know, right now it's some of the, uh, like, for example, like right here, look at this almost perfectly engineered curve. as if this was some kind of uh, seawall structure or port structure. It just doesn't seem like nature would have made something so perfect. And there's other areas too, and I want to see if I can find it real quick. I kind of lost it. Where you see what look like there could have been angles. And that's usually the smoking gun for bank intelligence is that they create here we go look at these matching curves here the equidistant spacing of everything and like I said you have to look at this from a very specific angle using historical imagery and it just sticks out like a sore thumb now, along with this, I would like to share some stuff that I found in Antarctica. I did something a little bit different. I cleared off everything. I unchecked all the boxes and so that we could look at Antarctica without all the lines and all the things that I've discovered before and see if we could go look at it and find anything else from high above because zooming in in super high res is not something everybody can do. So in this video, I would like to show things that don't require you to have a 24-inch computer and, you know, super high-res imagery that can look really, really close to things. The first place I wanted to stop was here. Now, this is, you can see, a natural mountain ridge line, but look at these other two ridges. How could those be natural? the way they cross here, almost, once again, almost at 90 degrees. And where they meet here, looking like there could have been some type of structures or ancient meeting places. And this is high altitude. This is way up here. This is, this is 26,000 feet. You can see this. And there's another one over here. Once again, same thing here. It just seems like it sticks out from everything else around it. Something very strange. And they're in predictable patterns here. Here's another one that's... Now, This these two images are kind of offset because they were taken at different times. But it's virtually a straight line from this river all the way through here with others laid out. I mean, you can really see the hand of ancient man here 
from high above with no high-res imagery, you can see this. What they were, what their function was at the time, I don't know. But when I see things like this, angles like this, square images like that, It's going to be an exciting thing in the next 50 years, 50 to 100 years, as technology goes forward and more people pay attention to this. It might be one of those things where people warn of the melt of Antarctica, but what's revealed from it starts to be more important than, you know, the foot or so of sea level rise. That can be adapted to, that people can make provision for, since you know it's coming anyway. Even those who would say that it's guaranteed all of this, this climate change thing, since you know it's coming, you can adapt to it. It's that simple. Just move a little farther away from the water. And one other thing here that I wanted to show, and this is why sometimes it's important to use your historical imagery, because the year that I was looking in, it didn't show up. Now, I want to show this whole region. Now, here there is this very strange area. It looks like there's a road, a straight line that just appears out of nowhere. And it ends up at this place where there's a larger circle and an inner circle. Now, that in and of itself is probably not anything that, you know, is a smoking gun. But you notice that the vast majority of the snow in this region is all melted, except for over here. It's very thick, very dense, and once again, what do we see? Like we have seen so many times before, in the right proportions, something that appears to be the head of a bird with an eye. Either this is a raised feature, it's been treated with some type of hydrophobic coating around it, or some type of coating that makes the ice stick and snow stick so that you could see this year round. I mean, who knows the technology they had? And you can once again see where it looks like there's activity around it. And that's the kind of stuff that, to my mind, is the most important stuff to show in Antarctica. When you can look at things from a different angle, from high above, the way that most people don't. And the last thing I'll leave with is this, because it's one of the most elegant finds down here in its simplicity. This is very, very clearly a constructed entrance into a mountain. We have two 90 degree angles at the front, this nice flat platform, these perfect walls this archway, and to give you an idea, I'll measure this, how big this is. The front platform right here, is 20 feet across, which is about six and a half meters. This is a, a standard two-lane highway in North America. Easy. 22 feet across. You could get two full-size vehicles. The height from what it looks like about 15 meters high about, about 50 feet. So 50 feet high and the size of a two-lane highway in the size of this mountain pardon me, in the side of this mountain. And looks like an engineer built it. It really does. There's nothing around it that could explain it any other way. I'll zoom out and show you where this is. As you can see, it's this enormous mountain range that doesn't look like anything's there. But when you look a little bit closer... Tells a whole nother story. Like, share, subscribe.
would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Hot time, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond, Chris.